Now here are some quick photo tips for you. Only high quality photos are going to be accepted into stock photo sites. So if you want to have high quality photos, you need a high quality gear. So I highly recommend that you use a DSLR camera and a plain 50 millimeter lens is just fine. Now you're going to want to try to take pictures uh, that are difficult for regular people to take with their smartphones. And if you are going to be using DSLR cameras, try modifying your shutter speed and, and try to play around with it. For example, you could try taking long exposure photos. Long exposure photos tend to sell more. When you're taking these pictures, make sure that there's a concept behind the photo. You have to try to capture photos with intention. And also try to make your photos socially relevant. Another important key is to make sure that your picture elicits some type of emotion or has some type of purpose, such as showing that it's the fall season. Now, photos that do well are in the niches related to food, health, beauty, fitness, money, and business. You also have to remember to leave some room for copy and text for the users to put on the photo. And you should know that photos are not going to be accepted if there are brands, names, or license plates. Taking pictures and selling them is not only a great way to make money, but it's also very fun to do. In this video series, I'm going to be talking about stock photography online. And so this is where you upload your photos to stock photography agencies and their websites, and then you would get paid a commission or royalty whenever somebody purchases your pictures from these websites. And stock photography is never going away and will always be in demand. Although I must warn you, it is harder to make money selling photos nowadays than it is before, say a few years ago, because of the competition. However, there are people who are making six figures per year with stock photography. And this video series was created to help you rise above your competition. Lastly, I just wanna say that stock photography is a great learning experience and you're gonna become a much greater photographer because of it. It's also satisfying when you see companies using your work and knowing that your work has value. And like I said earlier, it's fun. Now that you've taken some pictures, where do you sell those pictures online? Well, the easiest way to find these sites is just to type in stock photos on Google and you'll find plenty of stock photography websites where you can upload your photos. Now, let me just give you some of the top sites out there. Okay, there is Pond5, which pays 50% of the sale. Um, Alami, which pays 40% royalty per photo. And there is one pho photographer that I know of who makes $100,000 per year from just this one website. Okay, and there is IEM, which pays 50%. A lot of photographers are having success with this site. And there is Getty, which pays 20 to 30%, but they do sell photos for a much higher price, uh, between $300 to $500. Okay, And 123RF, this stock photo site, uh, the way they work is that the more photos you upload, the higher the royalty percentage that they'll pay you. And there's iStock, which pays 15 to 45 percent depending on the photo but they'll pay you a higher rate if your photos are exclusive to their site and there's a dreams time which has a very thorough approval process but if you do get approved they'll pay you 25 to 50 percent royalty and up to 60 percent if your photos photos are exclusive with their site plus they'll even pay you an extra 20 cents per photo and then one of the biggest stock photography websites out there is Shutterstock. They'll give you the most exposure because of their reach, huge customer base, and ability to advertise your photos. And there's Adobe, which will give you almost as much sales, but higher sales amounts. And Adobe stock is integrated into the Adobe software. There's iStock Getty Images, uh, which can also get you a lot of sales. Now, what I usually do advise to photographers is to stay away from some of the larger stock agencies such as Shutterstock, iStock, etc. because they're public held, publicly held companies 
and they're more interested in making their shareholders happy and not the individual contributors. They just don't have the incentive to help contributors grow and make more money. However, if you are a beginner, you may want to try out these larger stock agencies just to test out the waters and to gain experience at first. And then you could try out the smaller agencies such as Dreamstime, Stockfresh, etc. The advantage of working with these smaller agencies is that there's less competition for you as a contributor. But then again, everybody is different, so you have to figure out what works for you. And interestingly, I know of somebody who makes more money uploading to free stock photo sites like Pixapay than other stock photo sites because people have the option to donate to you when they download your photos for free. In the previous video where I spoke about where to sell your photos online, I forgot to mention that you could also sell your photos directly from your phone. And there are a few apps available for that, but uh, the most popular photo app right now is one called FOP. And with FOP, you download it, and I believe it's available both for the Android and uh, the iPhone. And you get 50% of the sale, but you can make more money by joining what they call missions on FOP. And these missions are sort of like projects for brands and other companies and each mission if you are to win these missions uh, they pay a prize for the winning people and it usually starts at around fifty dollars and usually it can be a lot higher okay now if you want to have success with this app you want to analyze the photos which have already been sold so take a look at the sold tab and the explore section of the app I also recommend that you analyze the profiles of people who have won missions or sold a lot of photos as they usually have a lot of good photos uh, which can give you ideas. And lastly, you could create profile on folk and follow people. So you can follow uh, other photographers and they could follow you and you guys could share tips with each other and be more successful in the long run. Earlier, I mentioned that you should try to avoid large stock photography websites such as Shutterstock. However, if you're new and you want to gain some experience, or for whatever reason, if you feel that large stock photography websites are for you, here are some keys to success. Obviously, these big sites have thousands of photos, and photos that have less saturation will sell the best. For example, pictures of cats, unless there's something unique about the picture, won't do as well as pictures of animals in the wild. Another example is pictures of iconic buildings such as the White House. These types of pictures won't do as well because there's already a lot of pictures of the White House out there. Now however if there's something unique such as an event or a protest happening around there and you capture that on photo then that picture will do a lot better. It's also important to use the right keywords. For example, if you're posting photos of flowers, you'll be more successful if you know the exact scientific name and the species of those flowers, and also the English name, uh, where they're from, and other details. And from what I've seen, the best-selling images are the ones with themes such as Christmas, Halloween, Easter, etc. And new images usually sell better than old images, simply because old images tend to get buried in the search results. In the last video, I gave some tips on how to be successful if you were to upload to those larger stock photography websites. Now in this video, I want to give some tips on how to be successful just in general. So th these tips uh, will work whether you decide to go for the smaller stock photography websites or the larger stock photography websites. To start off with, you cannot be a generic photographer and make money with stock photography. To be successful you have to niche down. You cannot be too broad. So you have to be very specific and also good at what you do. For example, portraits of people are always popular. So if you can focus on that, you'll probably do well. You should also stay in tune with what's going on in the world. People who are talking about the popular topics of today need images to support what they're saying. And if you are going to be uploading to multiple 
stock photography websites, you can use an app called MicroStalker for tracking your sales across multiple agencies. And lastly, if you're consistent, you'll increase your chances of being successful with stock photography. You'll do best if you upload a small amount of photos consistently. Selling your photos on stock photography websites is great. However, there is a lot of competition and it is harder to make money nowadays than it is in the past. So one thing I like to tell people who are involved in stock photography, you know, if they want to take their business to the next level is to start their own website and just sell photos from your own website. And what I like about being in control, having your own website and selling your photos from your own website is that you can collect the emails of your customers and people who visit your website. And basically, whenever you have new photos, uh, you can notify your list of subscribers. You could also offer deals from time to time. You see, when you have an email list, you could just email them whenever you're in need of some cash flow. Now, what I recommend you do is if you are going to start your own website is to make your website focused on one niche. I know of somebody who made $4,000 in one month from his own site. Now, aside from just collecting emails from your customers, you could also uh, collect emails from people who just visit your website and to entice them to opt in you can run a contest where if they enter their information such as their email and their name they'll be entered to win a photo or a print another great thing about building a list of subscribers is that you can build a relationship with your audience and that you're going to get repeat sales in the future you see when people buy your photos from stock photography websites you don't collect their information so it's not like you could tap their shoulder in the future and say hey would you like any of my other photos or my newest photos this way with your own website you could just notify them you know like I said earlier whenever you have uh, new photos or if you have a discount that you're offering you should also sell prints of your photos from your own website to increase your revenues now if you're scared to start your own website uh, there are several tools out there that make it very easy for you and one tool that I highly recommend is called Shopify one good feature of Shopify is that they will contact somebody who abandoned their shopping cart and they'll get reminded to purchase from you and there's all types of themes available for you to use from Shopify Now, once you have your site up and running you could use Facebook ads to drive traffic to your site 